Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History. And yeah, this isn't a green screen behind us. No, it's Theodore Roosevelt's grave site. That's right, it's Theodore Roosevelt's grave site. The 26th president of the United States, Teddy Roosevelt. That's his actual grave site. Yeah, We're what? here at the Young's Memorial Cemetery in Oyster Bay, Long Island in New York. Me and Henry, we decided to go see some Teddy Roosevelt stuff today. Yep. And we're actually taking this video live with President Roosevelt's gravesite right behind us. So today is our next presidential series installment. Yes, looking at the 26th president of the United States. Who is it, Henry? Cedar Roosevelt, or as he was called, Teddy Roosevelt. Very good. Theodore Roosevelt, or AKA Teddy Roosevelt. The gravesite of the man behind us. So, here we go. Sit back and relax. First though, before we get into Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th president of the United States. Henry, what do the people have to do? Hit that button down below, leave a like, comment, hit the bell, and give us a thumbs up. That's right, good job, dude, nice job. So, hit subscribe down below. Likes, thumbs up, comments, questions, all that stuff. And of course, hit that little notification bell because it's gonna notify you when we release a video. And Henry, when is that? Every single week. Every single week, that's right. So now, sit back and relax because we're gonna take a look at the 26th president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, and this is Dead History. Dead History. Whoa. Dude, look at this. Whoa. Now we're inside. Yeah. Who's that behind us? Cedar Roosevelt. Cedar Roosevelt. That's right. And he's the 26th <laughs> president of the United States show. Right? And what was his nickname? Te Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Ted. Okay. So, now, the guy behind us is the 26th <laughs> president of the United States Cedar Roosevelt. That's right. The uh, big guy behind us. The big guy. Yeah, that's right. We have some awesome things to tell you guys about Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Of course, as we know, he's one of four presidents on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, he is actually the last of the Mount Rushmore presidents. What? Yeah, because it was Washington, it was Jefferson, Lincoln, and now Teddy Roosevelt. So that's pretty cool. Four. We have four. So we have some fascinating things to tell you guys about Teddy Roosevelt such as he ran for a third term and he was only the what? second president to ever do that yep and he ran under his own third party after being almost assassinated there was an attempt of an assassination on his life really yeah and you want to know what's really cool about it what he not only got shot but while the bullet was still in his chest he gave a 90 minute speech afterwards what what it's crazy so, we're going to get into all that. Considered one of our greatest presidents of all time, the 26th president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, the man behind us. We're going to get into tons of fascinating things. We're very, yeah, we're very excited about this presidential series installment. Now, Henry, tell the people we already did the subscribes, we already did the likes. What do they need to grab before they sit down and watch? Potato chips and soda. <laughs> <laughs> the potato chips and soda. That's right. Crack open that bag, right? Get your potato chips, your pretzels, whatever you like. And sit back and relax. I wish I was home with a big bag of potato chips. Mmm, potato chips. Because we're going to take a look at who, Henry, right? This guy Cedar here? Roosevelt, yep. or as he was nicknamed, Steve, um, Teddy Roosevelt. That's right. Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th president of the United States. In our next presidential series installment. TJ with Dead History, Henry with Dead History. Now what we want you to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and welcome to our next presidential series installment. Taking a look at, I'm here with Henry. Henry, who are we taking a look at? Theodore Roosevelt. That's right, Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president of the United States. As I just said, I'm here with Henry. Henry, say hi. Hi. And uh, we're going to jump right in. Of course, part one, uh, we're going to take a look at his childhood, his you know, early life, and you know, a little bit about his early politics and that sort of thing. Uh, and then part two will be mostly about his presidency and his death and that sort of thing. So, um, right, Henry, that's the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. 
All right. So let's jump right in here. Uh, and start talking about Theodore Roosevelt and where he was born and his childhood. As a matter of fact, his birthplace in New York City, Henry, we just saw that, right? We just saw that. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, and we're going to show you guys that. So uh, give me uh, – let, let's just jump right in, right? Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Jump right in. All right, here we go. All right, so here we go. Theodore Roosevelt Jr. was born on October 27th of 1858 – at 28 East 20th Street in Manhattan, New York City. He was the second of four children born to socialite Martha Stewart Mitty Bullock and businessman and philanthropist Theodore Roosevelt Sr. He had an older sister, Anna, nicknamed Bamie, or Bammy, Bamy, I believe, a younger brother, Elliot, and a younger sister, Corinne Delano Roosevelt. Um... Nope, I read that wrong. I'm sorry. And a younger sister, Corinne. Elliot was later the father of first leader, lady Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. Pretty interesting stuff there. The wife of Theodore's distant cousin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. His paternal grandfather was of Dutch descent. His other ancestry included primarily Scottish and Scot-Irish English. So pretty interesting. Uh, and smaller amounts of German, actually, Welsh and French. Theodore Sr. was the fifth son of a businessman, Cornelius Van Schack, CVS Roosevelt, and Margaret Barnhill, as well as a brother of Robert Roosevelt and James A. Roosevelt. Theodore's fourth cousin, James Roosevelt, who was also James Roosevelt I, who was also a businessman, was the father of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Mitty was the younger daughter of Major James Stevens Bullock and Martha P. Patsy Stewart. Through the Van Shakes, uh, Roosevelt was a descendant of the Sculler family. Interesting. Uh, Roosevelt's youth was largely shaped by his poor health and debilit debilitating asthma. He repeatedly experienced sudden nighttime asthma attacks that caused the experience of being smothered to death which terrified both Theodore and his parents. Doctors had no cure. Nevertheless, he was energetic and mischievously inquisitive. His lifelong interest in zoology began at age seven when he saw a dead seal at a local market after obtaining the seal's head. Roosevelt and two cousins formed what they called the Roosevelt Museum of Natural History. Having learned the rudiments of taxidermy, he filled his makeshift museum with animals that he killed or caught. He then studied the animals and prepared them for ex uh, exhibition. At age nine, he recorded his observation of insects in a paper entitled The Natural History of Insects. Roosevelt's father significantly influenced him. His father was a prominent leader in New York's cultural affairs. He helped to found the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and had been especially active in mobilizing support for the Union during the Civil War, even though his in-laws included Confederate leaders. Roosevelt said, My father, Theodore Roosevelt, was the best man I ever knew. He combined strength and courage with gentleness, tenderness, and great unselfishness. He would not tolerate in us children selfishness or cruelty, idealness, cowardice or untruthfulness family trips abroad including tours of europe in 1869 and 1870 and egypt in 1872 shaped his cosmopolitan perspective hiking with his family in the alps in 1869 roosevelt found that he could keep pace with his father he had discovered the significant benefits of physical exertion to minimize his asthma and bolster his spirits Roosevelt began a heavy regime of exercise. After being manhandled by two older boys on a camping trip, he found a boxing coach to teach him to fight and strengthen his body. Uh, and a really cool fact, a six-year-old Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, witnessed the funeral procession of Abraham Lincoln from his grandfather's mansion in Union Square in New York City, where he was photographed in the window along with his brother Elliot as confirmed by wife Edith 
who was also present. So I've always loved that. Uh, always thought that was a really cool, interesting thing. Uh, what, what I'm going to show you now is actually the Theodore Roosevelt uh, birthplace. Uh, it is ran uh, by uh, the Park Services. Uh, it is in New York City. As I said, it's uh, right on uh, 20th Street there. Um, this is where Theodore Roosevelt was born. And this is also where um, he lived until he was about 15 years old. And then after I show you this, I am actually going to show you where his grandfather's mansion once stood. Uh, right in Union Square in New York City. So where Theodore Roosevelt witnessed Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession go by and where that famous picture of him in the window is, I'm going to show you that as well. So take a look here, Theodore Roosevelt's birthplace there in Manhattan in New York City, and then the spot where his grandfather's mansion was that he so famously watched Lincoln's funeral procession from a window. Here you go. Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Henry. Where are we, Henry? In New York. We're in New York City. We're right in Manhattan, and we're actually, if you stay, oh, stay right here, look at the camera, but behind us there, we're actually going to flip you guys around. This is where Teddy Roosevelt was born. Right there. Here, Henry, come on. Come on me. We're going to cross the street here. Make sure it's good, yeah, there we go. And this is it right here. This is where Teddy Roosevelt was born. Uh, in this old New York home. There it is right there. Teddy Roosevelt birthplace. President Theodore Roosevelt was born here on October 27th of 1858. Lived here until he was 15. The house is a typical brownstone of the 1840s and was restored in 1923 and opened as a museum. So, pretty cool stuff. Good, you can go up there, bud. Henry's going up the steps of his home. Yeah, we can go back. Yep, once Corona's over, and it's it's all uh, it's all opened up. Absolutely, it is closed right now due to Corona. But here it is. This is where Teddy Roosevelt was born here in New York City. There's Henry up there. Wave, Henry. Everybody's saying hi. I wants you to say hi on YouTube, I'm sure. And uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, TJ with Dead History. You're in a seat back there. We're still in the car. I just flipped you guys around. We're in the car. That building right in front of you guys, right there, that is the building that Teddy Roosevelt's grandfather once had his mansion on that site. And that is where Teddy Roosevelt, there's the famous picture of him from when he was a kid and he was looking out. So, looking out onto uh, Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession. That building right in front of you guys. So, there it is. That is where Teddy Roosevelt was looking. And it was coming right down this way, right down Broadway is where we are. So, pretty cool stuff. Hey guys, TJ here again with Henry. <laughs> So that building that you guys saw, that was where um, Cornelius Roosevelt, that's Teddy Roosevelt's grandfather, that's where his mansion once stood. It's actually on the corner of Broadway and East 14th Street here in uh, New York City. 
Um, that's where the mansion once stood, where you saw that glass kind of on the bottom and then just the building up top. Uh, it's just uh, really kind of too congested over here because we're right near um, Union Square Park and that sort of thing, so we didn't even stop. But I just wanted to film that earlier to show you guys that that is where Teddy Roosevelt, when Lincoln's funeral procession was going right down Broadway, that's right where the window was that he was looking out on it. Right, Henry? Taking your drink? <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. So there you have it. The birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt and where his grandfather's mansion once stood. Pretty cool stuff. So let's get into his education a little bit. Uh, Roosevelt was homeschooled mostly by tutors and his parents. Biographer H.W. Brands argued that the most obvious drawback to his homeschooling was uneven coverage of the various areas of human knowledge. He was solid in geography and bright in history, biology, French, and German. However, he struggled in mathematics and the classical languages. When he entered Harvard College on September 27th of 1876, his father advised, Take care of your morals first, your health next, and finally your studies. His father's sudden death on February 9th of 1878 devastated Theodore Roosevelt, but he eventually recovered and doubled his activities. Um, another thing I wanted to read to you guys real quick uh, regarding Roosevelt and kind of his early life, um, you know, because we did just touch on this. You know, he, he kind of went from wimp to warrior, you could say. Obviously, born October 27th of 1858, Roosevelt, often called Teddy or Teddy by friends, he was a frail kid. He was prone to illness, asthma, of course, and lacking physical strength. Despite his modest build, he was an avid outdoors enthusiast and sometimes carried his fascination with wildlife indoors by practicing taxidermy. At age 14, his family went on a tour of Egypt and he traveled with his somewhat macabre tools of the trade, including arsenic. As a teen, Roosevelt put his stuffed birds aside and decided to become aggressive in his physical routine, training in gymnastics and weightlifting. Later, he would practice both boxing and judo. The intense interest he showed in combat sports made him a fitness advocate for the rest of his life. Pretty cool. Um... Another fun, uh, interesting fact uh, about Roosevelt um, that I thought was was pretty neat uh, is the fact, of course, that I already said uh, that he saw Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession. As a child, Roosevelt witnessed the Abraham Lincoln funeral procession. There's a photo of the young Roosevelt, which I'm going to show you on the screen now, perched in a window watching the procession in New York City in April of 1865. And this photo surfaced in the 1950s. Young Teddy Roosevelt and his brother were at his grandfather's mansion, where I showed you what it looks like now, of course, just a couple minutes ago. Um, fun stuff. Uh, that, that, that's cool stuff. I like that. Um, another interesting fact about Harvard now, about his college days. He was an odd man out at Harvard. The enthusiastic and boisterous Roosevelt, who began attending Harvard in the fall of 1876, was unlike many of his more subdued peers. When he, when he was in a fervent discussion, he'd strike his hand into his palm to make a point. When he saw a friend, he'd yell at him from across the grass. Despite his rough manners, Roosevelt still made plenty of friends through his athletic pursuits, and he did okay academically, too. At the time of his graduation, graduation, he was ranked 21 out of 161 students. Fun fact there about, uh, about Roosevelt and Harvard. And now we're going to get into a little bit more about his Harvard uh, career. All right, so a little bit now uh, more about Harvard. He did well in science, philosophy, and rhetoric courses. Or rhetoric, I should say. Rhetoric. Rhetoric courses, but continued to struggle in Latin and Greek. He studied biology intently and was already an accomplished naturalist and a published ornithologist. 
What is an ornithologist? I don't even know what that is. Uh, he read uh, with an almost photographic memory. While at Harvard, Roosevelt participated in rowing and boxing. He was once runner-up in a Harvard boxing tournament. Roosevelt was a member of the Alpha Delta Phi Literary Society, later the Fly Club, the Delta Kappa Epsilon Fraternity, and the prestigious Porcelain or per Porcelain Club. Uh, he was also an editor of the Harvard Advocate. In 1880, Roosevelt graduated Phi Beta Kappa, 22nd, it says here, of 177. So he was right around there, 21st or 22nd. From Harvard, uh, he graduated with an A.B. Magda Cum Laude. Biographer Henry Pringle states, Roosevelt, attempting to analyze his college career and weigh the benefits he had received, felt that he had obtained little from Harvard. He had been depressed by the form, uh, formalistic treatment of many subjects, by the rigidity, the attention to... Uh, manipulate there were uh, that were important in themselves, but which somehow were never linked up with the whole. So uh, Roosevelt felt like he didn't get much out of Harvard, uh, which was kind of interesting. After his father's de death, Roosevelt had inherited sixty five thousand dollars, which in the would be the equivalent to like one point seven or one point eight million dollars in this day and age. It was enough to live off comfortably for the rest of his life. Roosevelt gave up his earlier plan of studying natural sciences and instead de decided to attend Columbia Law School, moving back into his family's home in New York City. The family home that I showed you where his birthplace was. Roosevelt was an able law student, but he often found law to be irrational. He spent much of his time writing a book on the War of 1812. Determined to enter politics, Roosevelt began, began attending meetings at Morton Hall, the 59th Street headquarters of New York's 21st District Republican Association. Though Roosevelt's father had been a prominent member of the Republican Party, the younger Roosevelt made an unorthodox career choice for someone of his class, as most of Roosevelt's peers refrained from becoming too closely involved in politics. Roosevelt found allies in the local Republican Party, and he defeated an incumbent Republican state assemblyman closely tied to the political machine of Senator Roscoe Conklin. After his election victory, Roosevelt decided to drop out of law school, later saying, I intended to be one of the governing class. So there you have it. Uh, Roosevelt, you know, he wanted to... Uh, to try politics. He was very interested in politics, which, which was pretty cool. Uh, naval, I'm going to get into his naval history and strategy. While at Harvard, Roosevelt began a systematic study of the role played by the young United States Navy in the War of 1812. Assisted by two uncles, he scrutinized original source materials and official U.S. Navy records, ultimately publishing the Naval War of 1812 in 1882. The book contained drawings of individual and combined ship maneuvers, charts depicting the differences in iron throw weights of cannon shot between rival forces, and analysis of the difference and similarities between British and American leadership down to the ship-to-ship -ship level. Upon release, the Naval War of 1812 was praised for its scholarship and style, and it remains a standard study of the war. With the publication... Of the influence of sea power upon history, 1660 to 1783, in 1890, Navy Captain Alfred Ter Mahan, or Mahan was immediately hailed as the world's outstanding naval theorist by the leaders of Europe. Roosevelt paid very close attention to Mahan's emphasis that only a nation with the world's most powerful fleet could dominate the world's oceans, exert its diplomacy to the fullest and defend its own borders. He incorporated Mahan's ideas into his views on naval strategy for the remainder of his career. Pretty cool stuff. Now, his first marriage and uh, widowerhood. In 1880, Roosevelt married socialite Alice Hathaway Lee. 
Their daughter, Alice Lee Roosevelt, was born on February 12th of 1884. Two days later, the new mother died of an undiagnosed case of kidney failure that had been masked by the pregnancy. In his diary, Teddy Roosevelt wrote a large X on the page and then, the light has gone out of my life. Teddy Roosevelt's mother, Mitty, had died of typhoid fever 11 hours earlier at 3 a.m. in the same house on 57th Street in Manhattan. Distraught, Theodore Roosevelt left baby Alice in the care of his sister, Barney, uh, Bammy, or Bamy, in New York City while he grieved. He assumed custody of her when she was three. After the deaths of his wife and mother, Roosevelt focused on his work, specifically by re-energizing a legislative investigation into corruption of the New York City government, which arose from a concurrent bill proposing that power be centralized in the mayor's office. For the rest of his life, he rarely spoke about his wife Alice and did not write about her in his autobiography. While working with Joseph Buckland Bishop on a biography that included a collection of his letters, Roosevelt did not mention his marriage to Alice nor his second marriage to Edith Kermit Caro. So, his first wife uh, died, of course, Alice Hathaway Lee Roosevelt. And what I'm going to show you here is actually her gravesite. Uh, it is at the very, very, very famously known Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York, New York City. Greenwood Cemetery is home to many, 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 many famous graves, historical and otherwise. And what I'm going to show you here is uh, my visit to the Greenwood Cemetery. You're going to see Alice's gravesite, as well as pretty much the whole Roosevelt clan. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt's father is buried here. His mother is buried here. Um, several of the Roosevelt family are buried here. So this is the gravesite of his first wife. Um, pretty cool, interesting thing. I mean, it's not cool, but an interesting thing, at least I thought, uh, was the fact, and I will actually uh, read this here. I, I just told you, his mother and his first wife died on the same day. It was actually on Valentine's Day in 1884. Roosevelt's mother passed away from typhoid fever. One floor above in the same house, his first wife, Alice, died less than 12 hours later from Bright's disease and complications from giving birth to the couple's first child just two days before. The light has gone out of my life, Roosevelt wrote in his diary that night. So, as I said, so take a look here, these pictures that you're now seeing. This is at the Greenwood Cemetery, uh, and it is the gravesite of Alice Hathaway Lee Roosevelt, Roosevelt's first wife, and Roosevelt's parents, and a bunch of the Roosevelt clan. So that's what you're seeing here on your screen. All right, now his uh, Teddy Roosevelt's early political career, state assemblyman. Roosevelt was a member of the New York State Assembly. Uh, it was the 21st district in 1882, 1883, and 1884. He immediately began making his mark specifically in corporate corruption issues. He blocked a corrupt effort by financier Jay Gold to lower his taxes. Roosevelt exposed suspected collusion in the matter by Judge Theodore Westbrook and argued for and received approval for an investigation to proceed, aiming for the impeachment of the judge. The investigation committee rejected impeachment, but Roosevelt had exposed the potential corruption in Albany and thus assumed a high and positive political profile in multiple New York publications. Roosevelt's anti-corruption efforts helped him win re-election in 1882 by a margin greater than 2 to 1, an achievement made even more impressive by the fact that the Democratic gubernatorial candidate Grover Cleveland won Roosevelt's district. With Conklin's stalwart faction of the Republican Party in disarray following the assassination of President James Garfield, Roosevelt won election as the Republican Party leader in the state assembly. He allied with Governor Cleveland to win passage of a civil service reform bill. Roosevelt won re-election a second time and sought the office of Speaker of the New York State Assembly, but he was defeated by Titus Sheard in a 41-29 vote of the GOP caucus. 
In his final term, Roosevelt served as chairman of the Committee of on Affairs of Cities. He wrote more bills than any other any other legislator. Uh, in the presidential election of 1884, with numerous presidential hopefuls to choose from, Roosevelt supported Senator George F. Edmonds of Vermont, a colorless reformer. The state GOP preferred the incumbent president, New York City's Chester Arthur, who was known for passing the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act. Arthur, at the time, was suffering from Bright's disease, unknown to the public, and out of duty he did not contest his own nomination. Teddy Roosevelt fought hard and succeeded in influencing the Manhattan delegates at the state convention in Utica. He then took control of the state convention, bargaining through the night and outmaneuvering the supporters of Arthur and James G. Blaine. He gained a national reputation as a key person in New York State. Uh, he did, Roosevelt also he attended the 1884 GOP National Convention in Chicago. And he gave a speech convincing delegates to nominate African-American John R. Lynch, an Edmund supporter, to be temporary chair. Roosevelt fought alongside the Mugwump reformers. However, Blaine, having gained support from Arthur's and Edmund's delegates, won the nomination by 541 votes on the fourth ballot. In a crucial moment of his budding political career, Teddy Roosevelt resisted the demand uh, of the mugwumps that he bolt from Blaine. He bragged about his one small success. We achieved a victory in getting up a combination to beat the Blaine nominee for temporary chairman. To do this needed a mixture of skill, boldness, and energy to get the different factions to come in to defeat the common foe. He was also impressed by an invitation to speak before an audience of 10,000 the largest crowd he had addressed up to that date. Having gotten a taste gotten a taste of national politics, Roosevelt felt less aspiration for advocacy on the state level. He then retired to his new Chimney Butte Ranch on the Little Missouri River. Roosevelt refused to join other mugwumps in supporting Grover Cleveland, the governor of New York, and the Democratic nominee in the general election. He debated the pros and cons of staying loyal with his political friend, Henry Cabot Lodge. After Blaine won the nomination, Roosevelt had carelessly said that he would give hearty support to any decent Democrat. He distanced himself from the promise, saying that it had not been, uh, it had not been meant for publication. When a reporter asked if he would support Blaine, Roosevelt replied, That question I decline to answer. It is a subject I do not care to talk about. In the end, he realized that he had to support Blaine to maintain his role in the GOP, and he did so in a press release on July 19th. Having lost the support of many reformers, Roosevelt decided to retire from politics and move to North Dakota. And he kind of took up being kind of a cowboy in uh, the Dakota, in North Dakota. He, uh, he built a ranch. He named it Elkhorn. Um, you know, he, he liked to hunt. He hunt, you know, hunted bison. He did all this stuff. You know, he was def definitely very much an avid outdoorsman. And, and now that kind of brings us up to his second marriage. On December 2nd of 1886, Roosevelt married his childhood and family friend, Edith Kermit Caro. Roosevelt was deeply troubled that his second marriage had taken place so soon after the death of his first wife, and he faced resistance from his sisters. Nonetheless, the couple married at St. George's Hanover Square in London, England. The couple had five children, Theodore Ted III in 1887, Kermit in 1889, Ethel in 1891, Archibald in 1894, and Quentin in 1897. The couple also raised Roosevelt's daughter from his first marriage, Alice, who often clashed with her stepmother. So pretty cool. And then that kind of leads us up to uh, Teddy Roosevelt kind of re-entering public life. Uh, you know, upon Roosevelt's return to New York in 1886, Republican leaders quickly approached him about running for mayor of New York City in the city's mayor mayoral election. Roosevelt accepted the, nomina the nomination, despite having little hope of winning the race against United Labor Party candidate Henry George, 
and Democratic candidate Abram Hewitt. Roosevelt campaigned hard for the position, but Hewitt won with 41%, taking the votes of many Republicans who feared George's radical policies. George was held to 31%, and Roosevelt took third place with 27%. Fearing that his political career might never recover, Roosevelt turned his attention to writing The Winning of the West, a historical work tracking the westward movement of Americans. The book was a great success for Roosevelt, earning favorable reviews and selling numerous copies. And, you know, that kind of leads us up. He did some other things, Civil Service Commission. Uh, but one of the really cool things is Roosevelt ended up being a New York City police commissioner. After his appointment in 1895, Teddy Roosevelt attempted to reform one of America's most corrupt police departments. The future president regularly took midnight rambles to make sure officers were walking the beats. His decision to enforce an unpopular law that banned the sale of alcohol in saloons on Sundays made him a very unpopular figure in New York. But he persisted in the crusade even after receiving two letter bombs in the mail. Yeah, crazy stuff, right? Crazy stuff. Um, some other fun things about uh, Roosevelt. Let me see here. Don't want to get into too much about, um, of course, um, his presidency yet. Uh, he was also known as a very jealous man. He could be extremely jealous. While at Harvard, Roosevelt met his first wife, Alice Lee. After a courtship, the two got engaged with an eye on marriage after graduation. Despite Alice's adoration, Roosevelt was said to be very jealous when any man dared approach her. If a man got out of line, Roosevelt would threaten to challenge him to a duel. At one point, he even mailed away for a pair of French dueling pistols in case anyone wished to take him up on the offer. So, very jealous man. Interesting stuff there. Um, he, uh, as I said, he tried his hand at becoming a rancher. Uh, out in the Dakotas, uh, Roosevelt was often at his most comfortable when he was surrounded by the tropes of the outdoors, cattle, horses, guns, and vast stretches of land. Traveling to the Dakota Territory in 1883 to hunt bison, Roosevelt was intrigued by the idea of operating a cattle ranch there and soon went into business. With a $14,000 investment with Sylvain Ferris, the brother of his hunting guide and cattleman, Bill Merrifield. That led to a second ranch, which he dubbed Elkhorn, as I touched on a few minutes ago. While he, joined, while he enjoyed playing cowboy, complete with buckskin shirt and spurs, overgrazing and bad weather conspired to create financial losses. Roosevelt sold his interest in the ranches by 1898. So there you have that. He was an accomplished uh, author, as I said. Drawing on his affection for the outdoors, Roosevelt spent considerable time before taking presidential office authoring books with titles like Hunting Trips of a Ranchman and A Primer on the Western Frontier, the four-volume Winning of the West. The writing was in some measure an escape for Roosevelt, who once retreated to his Dakota Territory ranch in 1884 after his wife Alice and his mother both died on the same day. In his journal entry, as I said, for that day, he wrote, The light is going out of my life. Roosevelt continued writing for the rest of his life, relying on income from publishing rather than his public office salaries to support himself. Pretty cool stuff there. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about Roosevelt kind of leading up to his presidency? All right, let's see. A few other things to wrap up. Uh, kind of the early uh, childhood and that sort of thing of uh, Roosevelt here. Um, first print, yeah, we don't want to do that yet. Okay, photographic memory, we're going to get into that. Boop, boop, boop. We know about, the obviously, the uh, Abraham Lincoln funeral pr uh, procession. Um... Just trying to make sure there wasn't anything else. Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, he once chased down boat thieves. In 1886, Teddy Roosevelt's murdered boat was stolen from his ranch and taken down the Little Missouri River, calling it a matter of personal honor and feeling the need to pursue the criminals in his role as a deputy sheriff. 
Roosevelt gave chase while accompanied by his two ranch hands. Trailing armed thieves was dangerous enough, but the frigid late winter weather had turned the river into an icy, treacherous path. Sensing he could be in for a prolonged ride, Roosevelt packed up flour, coffee, and a copy of Anna Karenina uh, for downtime. Uh, after three days of braving freezing weather, the group crept up on the thieves on the riverbank and apprehended all of them. Fearing that tying them up might cut off their circulation in the cold air, Roosevelt ordered the men to take their boots off. In cactus country, that was a good that was good as good as a pair of handcuffs. Roosevelt spent the long ride back reading Anna Karenina. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I thought that was that was neat. Obviously, as we know too, he was a war hero, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, in the Spanish American War. Uh, he was a lieutenant colonel. Uh, drawn to public service after dropping out of law school, Roosevelt became president of the New York City Board of Police Commissioners in 1895 and assistant secretary of the U.S. Navy in 1897. After the Spanish-American War broke out in 1898, Roosevelt insisted on serving and eventually becoming colonel of the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry. His Rough Riders were involved in skirmishes, and Roosevelt himself was wounded by shrapnel while advancing on the San Juan River in Cuba. At the Battle of San Juan Hill, he led a charge with a skeleton crew of men holding Spanish soldiers, soldiers at bay and keeping position until they were relocated by superiors. Roosevelt's leadership was hailed by many as an example of courage, and reports of his bravery helped win him a seat as governor of New York upon his return. So, of course, pretty cool stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much going to be it to just kind of start off here. Um, he had a really good memory. That's another thing I could touch on real quick. Uh, Roosevelt claimed he had a photographic memory, but it is a statement that can't be easily proven today. But biographer and historian Edmund Mer Morris cited several documented cases where Roosevelt was able to recite obscure poetry and other content well over a decade after he read the documents. So cool thing there. Um, of course, I touched on this. What's the deal with how the Roosevelts were related? Teddy and Franklin Roosevelt were fifth cousins. Eleanor Roosevelt was Theodore's niece, and Uncle Theodore presented the bride at Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt's wedding. So, pretty interesting little fact there, too. Um, as I said, he was a prolific writer. He aided uh, by his excellent memory and his always high energy level, to, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Wrote about 35 books in his lifetime and an estimated 150,000 letters. And he did write an autobiography. Um... He, Roosevelt was also uh, Roosevelt was a grad college dropout. While Roosevelt graduated from Harvard, he left law school at Columbia without receiving a degree. Roosevelt had become focused on local politics and lost interest in a legal career. So pretty cool there. Um, we know about that. We know about that. Okay, I think that's pretty much going to be it. I really do. I think um, you know as far as this goes right now. Um, that's pretty much the best to kind of go off of right now leading up to his presidency. We're going to get into a lot of other fun facts and cool stuff regarding Roosevelt's presidency. And, of course, just in general, uh, that'll be in part two. But I think this kind of leads you up. We showed you the birthplace, where he grew up. Um, you know, we showed you the mansion where that famous picture of the Lincoln funeral procession where he, uh, you know, looked out the window at his grandfather's mansion. Uh, we showed you all that stuff. So now we'll move on to part two, of course. So stay tuned tomorrow for part two to take a look at the presidency and the legacy and the death and, of course, the gravesite of Teddy Roosevelt, our 26th president. I hope you enjoyed this part one. Uh, I hope it was fun for everybody. Stay tuned, of course, for part two tomorrow. And uh, I'll be flying solo. Henry uh, was here for the early portion of this, but... I am flying solo now, so I'll be solo for part two of the audio. And, uh, yeah, we'll really dive into some more fun stuff about Teddy Roosevelt. So stay tuned. As always, thank you for the support. Thank you for everything. And uh, keep those comments and questions coming. We love it. And we will see you tomorrow for part two.
Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.